A lot of people talk about phoenixing uh, when they talk about insolvency. So what phoenixing generally is understood to involve is uh, a company that is incurring a lot of debts and then rather than pay those debts out of the assets it has, it simply transfers the assets to another company and then it just leaves a corporate shell that can't pay the, the bills that it's already got. And people think that's a really bad thing because effectively it's a way to rip off creditors. Uh, a real uh, example of where phoenixing can occur is in the construction industry. So for example, a developer might engage a number of subcontractors to do work and then rather than pay those subcontractors, it can transfer all the assets out of the development company to a new company and leave the sub subbies uh, in the lurch for the money they're owed. And it's important to realise that in many cases, engaging in Phoenix activity is actually illegal. And if there is evidence that that's occurred, then ASIC has the people, the powers, and the resolve to uh, prosecute. So people often say they have concerns with the uh, conduct of people in the insolvency industry. Um, and ASIC has spent quite a lot of resources over the past few years trying to address those concerns. And really we're focusing on three things. First of all, we're focusing on the competence of people who are insolvency practitioners. If someone takes on a job, then they should have the resources and the time to do it properly. So we have come across cases in the past where very, very small firms literally have hundreds and hundreds of matters, and that's simply not good enough if they're not delivering on what they're supposed to be doing. The second area where we focus quite carefully is around independence. Really, practitioners should be impartial and they should be independent as required under the law. And that means they need to give disclosure about what conflicts they might have to creditors. And if creditors feel uncomfortable with those conflicts, they can vote to have the practitioner removed. It's very important that creditors realise that. And then the third key area we focus on is around improper gain, which is really about remuneration. And that's saying that insolvency practitioners are entitled to a reasonable fee for what they do. Um, but overcharging, uh, or potentially overcharging, is something that will attract our attention. And we've actually uh, had people removed from the profession because they've been overcharging. There's a lot to understand about insolvency, but it's important to realise there are some really helpful resources that are available. The first thing people should do is find out who is the relevant insolvency practitioner and talk to them. They'll be able to provide some guidance about what's happening. But you can also go to asic.gov.au. That has some general information about insolvency type issues. That's a very useful place to go. But we also maintain a website which has a large number of publications relevant to things that are happening to companies in insolvency. And that's also available from asic.gov.au as well. So I'd strongly encourage people to use those resources.